The familiar face of Bobby Gould, recently signed by Bristol Rovers, for whom he scored a hat-trick on his debut last week. One of the most cheerful men in the game, he's now had eight clubs. Before the match, he was telling me that his motto of have boots will travel has now been changed to have goals will always score. And it's goals Tottenham hope Colin Lee will produce. He's their new signing from 4th Division Torquay for £60,000, 21 years old, and plunged straight into the Tottenham side because they have so many injuries. Altogether, six first-team men are missing, including John Duncan and Chris Jones, who normally play up front. But at number 11, Spurs do have Peter Taylor, and he's one of three players with that surname taking part in today's match. The two others are on the Bristol Rovers side. Tony Taylor at left-back, the former Palace player, and at centre-half, long-serving Stuart Taylor, whose testimonial year this is. And altogether in the Bristol Rovers team, there are six Welshmen. Bristol Rovers kicking off, playing from the left, and a piece of Football League history being made here today. This is the first meeting ever in the league between these two clubs. Spurs are in the dark shorts. Jimmy Holmes. That's for Lee. Flag was already up for offside. Spurs, whose supporters have stuck with them so well early on this season in the second division. Crowds have been good here at White Hart Lane. In size and in the way they've encouraged Tottenham, who get the free kick there. is Holmes now McNabb <laughs> goalkeeper may have been unsighted at first 18 year old Glyn Jones there in goal for Rovers but in the end he got down and turned it away with one hand the shot coming in from Neil McNabb <laughs> quickly taken for Naylor <laughs> the flick on by Hoddle and it nearly went in Glenn Hoddle creeping in there at the near post. Hasn't had many league games, this young goalkeeper. Just come into the side in place of Martin Thomas. And he'll have a fair amount to do this afternoon. Hoddle. Seven there is Williams part-timer in fact with Rovers and he finds Staniford that was a good ball and McAllister had to hurry free kick given against Staniford on by Lee for Hoddle here's Taylor well held by the goalkeeper first burst we've seen from Peter Taylor this is Stanley Forth looking for Gould Perryman in the way Again, good approach play by Tottenham. Here's Hoddle. Moore's got up there. Lee got it. And the new boy makes his mark. He gets a goal on his debut. The ball played by Hoddle into the box. Ian Moore's got up very well on the far post to head down. And Lee just beat defender Day there. The ball skidding low into the corner. And Spurs are in front. 
21 minutes gone. And Colin Lee, a very happy young man. Song, glory, glory, hallelujah. Perryman. Hoddle. Neil McNabb. McNabb really got hold of that. Beautiful shot with his left foot. And young Glyn Jones reacting extremely well to turn that over. <laughs> Lee Klein again! Well, this is becoming a fairy tale. No wonder he looks so pleased. Two goals in the space of five minutes for the young man playing his first match at this level. The corner swung across and Colin Lee climbing beautifully, heading it in perfectly. And Spurs now in 26 minutes lead by two goals to nil. Well, Tottenham scored five goals against Oldham here in their last home match, and they look to be in a rampaging mood again. McNabb, Holmes. Poor kick straight to Pratt. He'll try one here. And John Pratt, a touch of the Pele's. Actually, a free kick's been given against him for handball, I suspect. But as the goalkeeper kicked that ball straight out to Pratt, and in doing so was well off his line, Pratt tried the spectacular, rather like Pele did in Mexico in 1970. As it turned out, it wouldn't have counted because he was pulled up for handball. Now, standing forth. Turned across for Gould! Was the first clear cut chance Rovers have had. Perryman. Using the space well, Steve Perryman. Here he is again. Taylor, Peter Taylor. McNabb. shooting from Neil McNabb from well out flying save there by young Glyn Jones held it well <laughs> offside that was Staniforth Shaking off Gould. Four Tottenham players ahead of him. Five now that Hoddle's made a run down the right. This is how the second goal came, really. Taylor! <laughs> Peter Taylor makes it three and scores with his head for the second week running. And there'll be some amusement in the Tottenham camp about that because before the match, 
Peter Taylor was joking about his heading ability. Scored one at Charlton last week, and there he was again. Glenn Hoddle made the extra man on the right, chipped the ball in near post, and Goal Peter Taylor glumps it home. So, just a minute before half-time. Spurs keeping up their average this season of three goals per match here at White Hart Lane, and they've scored three today in the first half. A good header that was. Here's Moores. Well, the Tottenham supporters in understandably good heart. Lane, a happy place to be at half time. Spurs going off to thunderous applause. And when you consider that six of their first team players are injured, including the two main strikers, John Duncan and Chris Jones, it makes you realise how pleased they'll be with the way Colin Lee is starting. The first two goals down to him, and the third one from Peter Tate. So Spurs start the second half, playing now, of course, from left to right. There's Moore's header on. This is Lee again. Peels for handball, not given. Tony Taylor. Challenged by Peter Taylor. In fact, those two players in the picture there were both together at Crystal Palace. Peter Taylor later moved, of course, to Tottenham. And Tony Taylor went to Southend and Swindon before finishing up at Bristol Rovers. Oh, and here's Lee. Moores! And this Rovers defence is there for the taking, it seems. Tottenham finding so much space. And Lee was involved again. Glenn Hoddle, look at that. McNabb. <laughs> it's hit Peter Taylor the shot. Hoddle again. Naylor. And McNabb. In again by Hoddle. Then by Peter Taylor. There's Lee again. It's Taylor! Peter Taylor can't believe it. Good save by the goalkeeper, though. Give him credit for that. It really was. Holmes. Oh, look at this. Hoddle again. And Spurs, as befits a side, three goals up, are absolutely full of themselves. That last attack... Rovers surviving by the skin of their teeth and by a very good reaction save from the young goalkeeper. Here's McAllister. Oh, a lovely dummy by Peter Taylor. He's got four in the middle as well. Oh, they all miss it, and Morris! Morris put it in! Number four for Tottenham. a brilliant goal in its way because Peter Taylor on the right wing worked the dummy and got ahead of his man and when he pulled the ball back the sort of cross defenders hate it was low Lee missed it Pratt missed it but Moores didn't miss it so with 56 minutes gone 
Spurs now need just one more goal to equal their best total of the season. And an hour gone, and Bristol Rovers want to make a substitution. This is Paul Hendry who's going to replace Frankie Prince. Former Birmingham player. And no wonder Don Megson, the Rovers manager, had his head in his hands there. Nothing's gone right for his side this afternoon. Don Megson on the right as we look. Here is an early announcement with Mr. Leslie Bixby of four Ethel Cottages. Beta. Gould calling up front. And it runs to Gould and a good save. Well, he's had there two only real chances. First one he put wide and the second one well stopped by Danes. Two tailors again and the corner to Spurs. Tottenham's fifth after 73 minutes. That's number five for Spurs, a hat trick for Colin Lee. So Bristol Rovers truly taken apart here. Tottenham equaling their score against Oldham a fortnight ago. And at this rate, there'll be plenty more goals to come in the second division from Spurs this season. Because what they're doing today is putting the chances away. McNabb, plenty to aim at again. And Stuart Taylor out for a corner. going to come to Holmes, Lee Taylor, the crowd by the way this afternoon 26,311, well there are 13 minutes left, Spurs have scored five goals and the match of the day record by the way is seven. Taylor! Good stop! That could so easily have been number six. And the record then would have been Insight. But Insight was where Glyn Jones kept that drive from Peter Taylor and he turned it out superbly. McAllister. They're coming in now to that penalty area from all angles and positions. Good control by Steve Perriman there on the chest. Now Peter Taylor, another little flick from him to Pratt. Return pass going behind Peter Taylor. Tottenham throw. McNabb, Hoddle, Taylor leaving it, Moores is through! Six 
6-0 now. An avalanche of goals. That one again was well worked. The Rovers' defence, court square, Pratt and Taylor involved in the move. Moores was put clean through. And his finishing, clinical and decisive. So, ten minutes to go, and Spurs now within one goal of the highest total ever seen on Match of the Day, which was seven by Brighton last season. That was Ian Moore's second of the match, and what a personal triumph for him and Colin Lee this game has become. Taylor's again. That's a goal kick. to be said without taking anything at all away from Tottenham that Bristol Rovers looked a very poor side especially in defence and as Moore's on again here for the hat-trick he's got it he's got his third as well and it was laid on by Lee and Spurs have scored seven Again, the partnership of Lee and Moores. Lee broke on the left, crossed a fast ball to say the least, and Moores got it on the volley, putting it away so well again. And so, eight minutes to go. And when they get the fans off the pitch, Nothing ought to spoil this Tottenham performance. There you can see the measure of it. Seven goals to nil. This victory is that the Spurs manager Keith Birkinshaw hasn't even seen it because he's away at another match. But the hard work he's put in is clearly evident in the way they play. His goal for Rovers. Hoddle. Oh, and John Pratt's away. Lee is in the middle. Taylor trying to get there. It's going to come to Taylor now. It's come to Lee. Four for Lee and eight for Tottenham. Well, you really can't believe it, except that it's happened. Four for the number ten, Colin Lee, three for Ian Moore's number nine, eight for Spurs, and history for match of the day. Because never before in a match covered by the programme, as one side scored eight goals. And there's the evidence with four minutes to go. Well, I recall back in about 1963, Spurs scoring nine here one day against Nottingham Forest of all teams in the first division in the days of Blanchflower. This could well be their best score since then in a league match. Evan 
Titans for Bristol Rovers. Stand here fourth, Hendry. Bater. And Bristol Rovers, frankly, have just fallen completely apart here this afternoon. Their defence has been far too naive for a Tottenham side who've worked hard, created so much space, and more important still, shown how to finish, which is often a criticism levelled at teams in the English league. going to be a corner again to Spurs. Moors. Hoddle! He looked offside, perhaps, but the referee's given the goal. Number nine. Again from a corner, Ian Moore's retrieving at the far side, knocked it back across the goal, Hoddle was all by himself, Bristol appeal for offside, the flag stayed down, and then Hoddle now gets his name on the score sheet. Just one minute from the end, Spurs nine, Bristol Rovers nil. Whiteheart Lane, absolutely booming with noise. How young fans can get into trouble when they've had a feast of goals like this to watch, I have no idea. One was being led away there by a policeman. But it's been champagne stuff from Tottenham. Hendrick. McAllister smiling as well he might. Evans darting in there, but Hoddle's there too. Evans again, but a foul's been given. John Pratt was fouled by Hendry. And Spurs chasing double figures in the last minute, and the referee has blown. And the crowd rise to Tottenham. And to Colin Lee with four goals, and Ian Moores with three. Amazing things happen in football. You lose your two main strikers, throw in a new partnership, as Tottenham did here, and look what happens. They got seven of the goals between them. Peter Taylor got one. Glenn Hoddle got in at the end of the act. And as the crowd celebrates, nine goals. Spurs go off delighted, and Bristol Rovers demoralised, wondering exactly what hit them. A stall there for Colin Lee, an unknown from the fourth division. In his first match, he gets chaired off the field. 